First up. Uh, this is the AGS O2MA sensor. Um, it's a, it looks a lot like those like DHT 11 or 22 sensors, and it's actually made by the same company, which is why it looks the same. Um, so the uh, AGS O2MA has a MOX gas sensor inside and a little microcontroller chip. Um, that acts as an I2C peripheral. Basically, it means that you can use this as a low cost and simple uh, TVOC, uh, total volatile organic compound sensor, gas sensor, you know, for ethanol, um, methane, and, and similar gases. It can detect those in the air. Um, it basically does a simple calculation to do parts per billion. Um, you can also read the gas resistance, there's only one gas resistance plate. It's you know not super calibrated, but it's very inexpensive, and you know plug and play works with three to five volts. One thing I will note about this sensor is um, it needs to run at under thirty uh, kilohertz clock for I squared C, which is unusual because the default I squared C clock for many boards is one hundred or four hundred mega um, kilohertz. So uh, you have to tune your I squared C controller to run, I use, you know, 20 kilohertz, for example, um, some controller chips like the RP2040 and ESP32 were happy to do this. I told them, hey, please run at 20 kilohertz, and they're like, sounds great. So did the um, Atmega328, but there are other chips, uh, the SAMD series that was not very happy about running at that low speed. Um, and so just be aware that you have to make sure that, you know, maybe check on oscilloscope that you can run your I2C controller at 20 kilohertz before you pick up the sensor. Other than that, it works pretty well. Next up. We have a new camera lens for the M12 camera from Raspberry Pi. This uh, really nice um, lens mount on the camera allows you to plug in, uh, screw in different lenses. We've got like wide and we've got, I think, a, a narrow telephoto. And this is a portraiture one. So this one has um, a narrow uh, uh, field of view and also, I think, a, a narrow um, focal range. And so you you know, it'll focus nicely on a face and get like the depth of the face, um, but it'll kind of a blurry background for that like, cool uh, modern portraiture look. Yeah. All right. Next up, this is what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, this is the Pico Debug Probe Kit from Raspberry Pi Foundation. So this is a, kind of an all-in-one SimSys stat board for debugging RP2040, but also other chips as well. It's also, by the way, an RP2040 dev board that you can just reprogram. You can load whatever code you want on there. It's got two uh, JST SH connectors, three pin, and it comes with three sets of cables. Let's go to the overhead because I feel like this would be a good... Yeah, we have a new overhead. We have a new overhead too, so let's test it out. So you can, if you move your head over, people could see you as you're doing this too. Look at that. Oh, I have two. Or not. I can get rid of you. Yeah, let me get rid of me because this is okay, I'm, not, I'm not ready for that yet. All right. Okay. I so hold on. The focus. I know. I'm. I got. I got this new. This is all new. So I'm gonna like this. Okay. So this is uh, your classic uh, Raspberry Pi Pico H, uh, and it comes with this connector at the end. And uh, earlier Raspberry Pi um, Pico boards came with three pins at the bottom instead. But I'm showing this because it's you know convenient. Uh, you can show that this plugs in nice and smoothly. This is the cable that comes with the uh, Pico probe. And then, you know, you plug this into, this is U for UR and D for debug. And you can plug this in here nicely. And now um, you still have to separately power these two, but then you this shows up as an open OCD device that you can then use to run uh, GDB for debugging with um, step debugging, where you can actually go through line by line. You can observe variables, you can, um, have it break and it enters a function, leaves a function, um, when uh, a variable gets changed, when memory is attached, whatever. It's very, very powerful. And um, if you like to do, uh, sorry, if, sorry, if you have um, the old uh, our Raspberry Pi RP2040 boards, you can use uh, this cable that has the plug headers or this version that has the socket header. So those are two options. And then there's also a USB to serial converter as well built in. So this other port, the one labeled U, gives you ground, RX, and TX um, that you can use to um, read and write UART data for printf debugging. There's of course uh, a UART here, but sometimes, especially when you're doing like USB host stuff or USB debugging, um, you don't want to use the printf debugging on here. You want to use uh, printf over a hardware serial pin, uh, like one of these, in which case um, you can use the USB serial converter and one of these, plug them in, 
and you can do both uh, GDB printing, sorry, GDB de step debugging and printf uh, UART debugging as well. Okay. Next up, um, you know, we had that code. Clear knobs. Clear knobs. Yeah, these clear are clear knobs. knobs. Uh, they've got yeah. a... We have a bunch of colors. Don't we? we have a bunch of colors. Bunch of colors clear, so clear is, is made out of a different material, so it's more expensive. Um, I do want to show that on this side of these, this is nice because it shows all the different angles. These are clear knobs. Um, they are used with six millimeter um, D shaft or T18. Uh, you can use either because as you see, there's a little, I think it's like a one or two millimeter um, uh, video, uh, set screw. Uh, and the top has a black marking so you can see the positioning of it. Griff potentiometers or um rotary encoders either one and they're clear they're clear knobs yeah FYI. you can pick clear different colors yes all right and then the start of the show tonight besides you lady ada our team our community our customers everybody who makes this go is the esp32 s3 reverse tft so many words and letters there it's a esp32 s3 feather um as you can see here and so let's look at the back first so the the back is the front the front and the back okay so this is um you got your esp32 s3 mini module four megabytes of flash two megabytes of ps ram dual core 240 megahertz 10 silica processor with wi-fi and bluetooth low energy does not have bluetooth classic by the way but uh it's the latest s3 um and then you've got all the little accessories that you would uh want on that back and i'll show this on the overhead uh, it's got USB-C um, for data and power. It's got a LiPo battery that charges automatically. Reset button, a standard QT port for I2C, two 3.3 volt regulators, one for the I2C port, one for the main board, so you can have like ultra low battery usage uh, and power. Max 17048 battery monitor, um, so you can check your state of charge. A little NeoPixel for... Um, Neopixeling, and then all the GPIO you need, I2C, analog input, uh, SPI, UR, etc. GPIO uh, plenty. And then on the flip side, you get a 240 by 135 pixel IPS display, very tiny display, with again the reset button is also on the front because it's useful, and uh, three GPIO zero, one, and two connected to buttons that you can press. Um, and you can press them to make it do stuff. So I can actually show on the Ooh, overhead. The chopper. Okay. Oh, this thing. So on the overhead, you can see the buttons. Uh, you know, I press D1, D0, D2. So we already have an ESP32 S2. This is just the S3 version. So it's actually kind of, you know, the same uh, pinout and everything. Um, reset is handy because you can enter the bootloader. Although I don't think it'll enter the bootloader because it, uh, it will. Um, so there's a UF2 bootloader already programmed in uh, for drag and drop. Of course, you can erase it. Um, this works with Arduino and CircuitPython um, because we have support for both of those modules. And uh, the reason I like the reverse mount style is that you can put like a feather on top, but then the TFT isn't blocked. Right. So if you want a feather wing, you want to add a GPS or real-time clock or uh, LoRa radio, and then you still have the TFT on the front. Shift this down a little bit. Um, you still have the TFT on the front with some buttons that you can use uh, to have it do different things, uh, display um, uh, status, um, sensor output, battery warnings, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, I think it's good for IoT projects. We'll have whippersnapper support. And again, like I said, CircuitPython and Arduino. All, all in one. I mean, you can do a lot of projects with no soldering. Just plug in the STEM IQT port yeah. in the back and you have buttons and a display. All right, let's do products. New, 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 new.